Around and around and around and around we go. That's basically how you knit. <laughs> it's going around and around a loom. Unless you're just knitting with knitting needles. And then it is going around with needles instead. So I lift the, the little loop, lift it on this peg, tuck this hook underneath, lift it up and over the peg, push it, that one down, and then I do the same thing and it tightens and it makes these. I believe this is like a fish hook type thing. So that's exactly how I do it. So that's how I knit. And then let's see, is that color long enough? Yeah, it's long enough. So, I will grab a pair of scissors. I always keep a pair of scissors in my kit with my knitting stuff. And here's the teal yarn. And then I unwrap it from this peg here, the end peg. Straighten it out. I cut off about an inch or an inch and a half. So I have enough yarn to create the knot. Sorry, I'm laying the loom down, so you can't really see me tying the knot, but basically, I'm just tying a knot with the teal around the wildflower yarn. And there we go. There it is. And you have to be really careful when you're putting this on wrapping it around so that you don't pull the knot apart. So you have to be really careful. Wrap it around. And it's okay if it sticks out like this knot here. This knot right here is the yarn is sticking out, but that's okay because you don't want to cut it off too close and have it be like unraveling on you. But I will cut it a little bit so that there's still a little bit left. So it's not that much of an eyesore. As you can see, There's the knot, there's the yarn. Okay. Here we go. I dropped it to cut that other piece of yarn. But here we go again.
I usually wrap it around like four or five pegs and then grab it so that it doesn't come apart when I'm doing the next little bit around the loom. This loom comes from a set of looms that I have. My parents had them in our craft room closet. And when I took up knitting on the loom, they let me use the loom. And then, whoops, can't forget that this is supposed to not be like that. Occasionally you'll come across yarn that is like coming apart basically. Pieces of yarn that's coming apart so you have to be very careful not to have it come apart. As you can see this one piece of yarn right here. Right here is a bit loose, but I will see what it looks like when I start knitting again. Here we go, back around the loom. Here it is, almost done, and that is how you So basically, I realized that that loose piece of yarn on the loom was needing to go over this one loop right here. So I took it over, and now that piece of yarn is right there. So now, I have to be very careful, the first few rounds, times around, on the loom with the new yarn is always the hardest, because you have to be very careful to not get... any of the stitches, the tied stitches of the yarn pulled up when you're pulling up the other piece, the under piece of yarn. I basically taught myself how to knit. And no one really taught me very much. I mean, my mom helped me because she knew so she knows a little bit of how to knit nothing against her though but i had to basically teach myself but it's always a good not thing to know especially if you come from a family that is on a budget like on a tighter budget and you can't really 
you don't really have the money to buy your own hats and scarves for winter time. So it's a good thing to know how to knit them for you and for your family and for anyone else because then you'll know how to knit when you have your own kids and it's winter time and they need hats and scarves and things that keep them warm. I mean, look who I'm talking to. Some of the people, well, most of the people that watch my videos are people who are older, who the audience is women over the age of 65. Not that that's a bad thing. But... I just wanted to show you a little bit of how I knit instead of just showing you like the progress. I wanted to show you a little bit of my knitting. This video is getting a little bit long so I'll probably stop it for tonight now and show you a little bit of how the changing of colors makes it harder to knit, but that it looks really nice once it is done. So I'll just finish these right here. I have like 10 more loops, so I'll finish it. And then do another layer. And then I'll show you around. You can barely see it, but right here, around here, is the teal. It's a little dark because of the lighting in here. Um, so as some of you know, I am a tuba player, as you've seen in some of my videos, and I recently finished a solo, a part of a solo piece that I'm working on this summer. It's called... Tuba Sonatina number one. Sonatina means a little sauna, sonata, which it really is because sonatas are usually like about 15 to half an hour in length, 15 minutes to half an hour in length, I think. So it really is shorter. I just finished the first movement of the piece. And I moved on to the second movement, which is the slower of the three movements. Just pulling out some more yarn to put on the loom. And if your yarn gets frayed, like this piece right here, the wildflower yarn, don't worry, it's just natural. Your yarn will get frayed, but you just have to keep going. And then you just go around the loom, around each of the pegs. And you don't want to miss a peg, because if you do, there will be a hole in your knitting. All in all, I believe each scarf is like... Uh, each scarf that I make is like at least six feet long. 
unless it's for like a shorter person and then I don't want it that long but out of all the scarves I've made I've made a purple and gold one Mesa high colors actually I've made two of those and then I've made one that is black and yellow or like black and goldish fat pan colors for one of my friends in high school because he really liked that man well he still does but and i've made one for my uncle which is Redskins colors. Sorry, this video will probably be about 20 minutes long, but I just wanted to show you some of my hats and scarves. I'll be right back. Sorry about that. My room has a lot of stuff in it, but I have one bag for my hats. This one I got in Texas at Six Flags. I've made a, a little tiny sock, or yeah, it's kind of a sock out of purple yarn. There's my gloves. And more gloves. And then here's one of my hats that I've made. And it's brown, soft brown yarn from Walmart. Kind of frays a little bit, but Nice and soft. And it keeps you warm. So those are my hats. I have one more, but it's sturdy, so I need to wash it. Here's a Mesa High scarf. That this color right here is purple. This is red and blue royal blue it's um it's a hat should be in with my hats may mesa community college colors 